Luce here with GLB Productions and today I'm here with this beautiful EF740 FS TT from Takamine Guitars. Now this is a very special guitar, it's actually an update of the original TF740 FS and it's a, it's a very unique guitar within uh, Takamine's lineup. The FS in the name stands for fingerstyle and it has a number of features that are meant for fingerstyle guitarists but as we go through this review I think you'll find that this is a very flexible and a very versatile instrument. So let's begin uh, with some specifications. Uh, there are a lot of them so please excuse me if I refer to my notes over here. So to begin with this is a standard uh, Takamine orchestra model or OM body, meaning that it is 19 and a half inches or 49.5 cm long and 15 and 3 eighths or 39 centimeters across the lower bout. Where it is different to the standard OM is in the depth of the body. And on this particular model, uh, the depth is 118 millimeters or 4.64 inches. This is almost the depth of a Takamine Dreadnought guitar, which is 12.5 uh, cm or 125 millimeters. So OM size body, but near Dreadnought depth. And the effect of this extra depth on the sound is quite interesting, uh, as you'll hear later. Um, the sound hole, as you may notice, is a little bit smaller. The sound hole on this guitar is 95 millimeters or 3.75 inches. The guitar has 20 frets total and the 20th fret is cut away uh, in the style of classical guitars. The neck is joined to the body at the 12th fret and as a result, the bridge of the guitar is moved down into the middle of the lower bout, which is also responsible for the way that this guitar sounds. Scale length on this guitar is 650 millimeters, 65 cm, and the nut width is 47.5 millimeters, which is 1.87 inches. Now, this is a kind of hybrid width. Um, Takamine generally have two main nut widths. They have uh, 42.5 millimeters or 1 and 11 sixteenths and they have 45 millimeters or 1 and 3 quarter inches just like most major guitar manufacturers. So this is wider than that but it's narrower than the typical classical guitar nut width uh, which is 52 millimeters or just over 2 inches. So as a result um, this nut feels wide but it doesn't feel like a classical guitar. And that is helped by the fact that the fingerboard is radiused like uh, a steel string guitar. It's not flat like a classical guitar. So if you have steel string capos, they'll work just fine on this guitar. The other thing that Takamine have changed to make this a unique guitar is that they've changed the string spacing at the bridge. The string spacing at the bridge is 6 millimeters, which is a little bit wider uh, than their standard string spacing. Uh, as you can see, this guitar has a very beautiful slot headstock. It has individual Goto open gear tuners, and these tuners have a very high gear ratio, meaning that you turn just a little bit and the sound changes, which makes it really easy to tune on the fly. But if you're not used to them, there's a tendency to over tune. It also uh, really helps with string changes. The headstock, as you can see, has a rosewood overlay. And instead of uh, the word Takamine, it just has a standard T and uh, this is reminiscent of the old bluegrass series as well as some of the newer incarnations in the new thermal top series. I personally I like it. I don't mind the word Takamine. I'm very proud to be playing guitars from this company but um, I think the T lends a real sense of simplicity to the instrument. The guitar has an abalone rosette 
and it also has abalone position markers. Um, the position markers are quite small and they're very discreet, especially those where the abalone is darker. So um, if you don't look very carefully, it can actually look like a classical guitar fingerboard, which um, often have no inlay at all. Also, the fact that the fingerboard is ebony uh, really helps to set off the abalone position markers. The guitar has faux tortoise shell binding around the edges and it also has black, white, black, white purfling, which is very tasteful. The guitar has a bone, nut and saddle. And now let's move on to the uh, top and back sides, which are what are really interesting. Um, the back and sides of this guitar are solid sapele, as you can see there, uh, a bit hard with all the reflections, I know, there you go. And um, the sapele that they've chosen for this has some really uh, beautiful straight grain uh, in it. The top of this guitar is solid thermal spruce. Now, the thermal top technology, which some other guitar manufacturers are also using, and they also call them Torify Tops, um, the idea is that before the guitar is built, the wood is baked in an oxygen-free vacuum. And this results in a guitar that sounds very played in, even straight out of the box. And I'm confident that this is something that you'll hear when we get to the playing. In terms of electronics, the guitar has Takamine's standard palathetic under saddle pickup, which has six individual piezo elements, one for each string. It has no sound choice docking port, as you can see, and this is because it features the TLD2 line driver preamp. The preamp itself is contained in an extension of the output jack socket. So if you look inside the guitar, you can see uh, this pencil-like uh, metal cylinder extending into the guitar body which contains the electronics and we'll do a discussion and a full demonstration of that later. Uh, because it has no external preamp, it means that there's no big hole cut in the guitar there, but it also means that there's no onboard tuner. So if you play this guitar, important to carry a clip-on uh, tuner if you don't tune by ear. So now let's move on to how this guitar sounds when it's played. As we mentioned earlier, this guitar has a number of very interesting features. Number one, thermal top. Number two, the depth of the body. Number three, 12 fret neck joint. And finally, the wide nut with the slightly wider string spacing at the bridge. So my impressions of this guitar now, this is my personal guitar and I've owned and played it for about eight months now is that it has great mid-range clarity and punch. It sounds like an OM that has been supercharged or turbocharged, right? Most OMs, they have this mid-range clarity, but because of the thermal top, I find that this guitar, it can go places that a normal OM cannot go. It can get very loud and it can get really strident in the way that um, an NEX or a Dreadnought might. But at the same time, it can also be really sweet and it can be um, very delicate depending on how you play it. So, you know, it says it's meant for finger style, but I just use it as a general purpose guitar. Now, I grew up playing classical guitar. So I'm used to that slightly wider nut width. Um, if you're used to a 1 and 11 sixteenths, you may have a bit of trouble initially, but because the fingerboard is radiused, I found that I didn't really have any trouble uh, getting used to this. In terms of the balance of the instrument, there is not a huge amount of bass. I find that it's quite well balanced. The, the depth of the body does not contribute 
to the bass, it actually contributes to the, to the mid-range. So as a result, you have a guitar that works very, very well on stage because it, it doesn't have this big boomy mid-range that tends to feed back and, and get in the way of the bass player and the keyboard player. But at the same time, it can go uh, really loud acoustically. So I think that Takamine have uh, voiced this guitar very well. The final thing is, what's all this about this thermal top business? Does it really work? You know, what do they mean when they say it sounds vintage when new? Um, my impression is that, first of all, you get a very quick response. Secondly, you get a depth of sound and a very open, uncompressed sound that normally you only get from an instrument that has been played in for a while. And finally, I find that if I, if I put this guitar away for a while, it immediately bounces back when I take it out to play, right? There's, there's no... Um, time where you have to play it for an hour or so before it so-called wakes up. So um, let's let's do some playing. Um, I'll play both fingerstyle as well as uh, I'll strum. Um, signal chain is this microphone in front of me here is a Bayer Dynamic MC930, a uh, true condenser externally biased and we're running directly into the video camera. So there's no mixer, uh, no EQ, no preamp apart from that uh, that's on the video camera. Okay, here you go. So this is a truly a wonderful guitar to play acoustically. Um, 
I love the way that the notes jump out and I also love the way in which the the 12th fret neck joint makes it keeps the guitar kind of close to you and it makes you want to become very intimate with the instrument. The other nice thing about it is that because the string spacing is a little bit wider, uh, I find that there's a little bit more margin for error, uh, whether, whether you're doing cross picking or finger style. Um, I mentioned I'm a classical guitarist, I play with fingernails, which is why I get the tone that I do and I play with classical guitar technique. But um, this might also be a neat instrument if you're thinking of doing some crossover stuff or you know just fiddling around. It's uh, a very creative instrument. Um, the open chords, especially you know that stuff, you know, you know, really, really rings nicely. The mid range is just so sweet on this instrument. Now let's move on to talk about the electronics in this guitar. As we mentioned earlier, it features the line driver preamp, the uh, second version of it, the TLD2. It has no sound choice docking port and the standard Takamine Palathetic pickup. So because it has no external controls of any kind, uh, it means that you've got no onboard EQ. Now Takamine have actually voiced this preamp very, very well, as you'll hear later. But if you do want to adjust, you can apparently extract the entire preamp and there are a couple of little switches that allow you to make changes to the way the EQ is voiced. I haven't done this and I don't know how to get the preamp out of the guitar. Um, the battery is actually held uh, in a plastic clip which is attached to the guitar's neck block, which is quite a sensible arrangement and it um, gets rid of those little velcro bags that you know s collect all kinds of dust and just unmentionables. Um, battery life on this preamp is not stated but given that it's a 9 volt system uh, I'm guessing probably about the same as the CT4B2 which is about 250 hours so a long time. Um, obviously there's no battery low battery indication so you'll need to use your ears to listen out for that. Um, the output socket is excellent. Uh, it features a variation on Takamine's standard output socket. It has the three screws that screw directly into the guitar's tail block and there is no external nut to come undone or loosen. Um, this has a slightly smaller lip than the standard one that is used on other Japanese series guitars and it also does not have the word uh, takamine around the circumference. This is a small detail so um, I think it's because it's integral with the preamp so as a result they had to use a slightly different output socket. Um, apart from that uh, one thing that I noticed is this particular output socket is very very tight especially when the guitar was new. So when you're plugging and especially when you're unplugging, be gentle. In terms of how the preamp sounds, this is an incredibly natural sounding preamp. Um, the first time I plug it in, I turned up my studio monitors and I didn't even know it was on because it sounds so much like the guitar. Um, Takamine have a way of doing this that I think is still amongst the best in the world, if not the best. Uh, so let's uh, do a bit of playing and you can hear how it sounds. Setup for the demo is the guitar is plugged into a radial a JDI, passive DI box, and the DI box is run into the input of the camera. Once again, no external preamp, no mixer, and no EQ. Um, there's no high pass filtering on this signal. It's just straight out of the guitar and into the camera. Hope you like it.
So that's the um, plugged in sound of this guitar. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that there is no really good way for me to communicate to you how the guitar sounds plugged in because even recording it direct like this, um, it tends to sound a little bit bright because there's no um, air buffer between uh, you and the sound that you're hearing. I find that when you run this guitar through studio monitors or through a full range PA system, it sounds absolutely perfect. You don't hear any of that brittleness or brightness that you tend to hear when you listen to the direct signal on, for example, a pair of, uh, of headphones or earphones. So just bear that in mind. So that's been my review of this guitar, the Takamine EF740 FSTT. Uh, it's truly a wonderful guitar. Um, this is one of the few uh, guitars that I bought uh, just because um, I like the way it sounded, right? I sat down and I play, played it. Uh, no, no intention really of buying it, but um, it really spoke to me. And I think it also speaks to the connection that I have with classical guitars, the idea of the, the slotted headstock and also the, the wider nut. Um, very... Uh, simple appointments in general. So I uh, hope this has been useful. Uh, please feel free to get in touch with questions or comments. Uh, leave them in the comment section below. This has been Bruno Luce for GLB Productions. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.